Okay, in this tutorial, we're going to take a look at the navigation mesh within Blender, or basically, it's kind of like artificial intelligence built in. So let's use our imagination here just for a second. Let's imagine this is a parachutist jumping in and needs to go in and track down this gold bullion. Maybe his colors should be different, you know, but do the jewels. He's going to track down the jewels. All right, so that's what the navigation mesh allows us to do. It allows us to find a way where it can seek around this path and to get there to find it. So let me just run it for a second and show you what it does. So I run it, comes down here. It's like sneaking in. It's got it just finds that corner there. Cruises around the corner on the far side. It's looking. It's looking. Then goes around because it tar it's targeting that ca that you know stash of jewels, and it gets to the goal right there. So the beauty of this is that's what this, uh, some of the features built into Blender are so powerful, especially if you're building a game or if you're just building some kind of simulation of some sort. It doesn't have to be a game for sure, but it does make cool games also. So uh, what we'll do is we'll build this from scratch. We'll leave a couple of these objects in here. I'll just get rid of this like that and I'll get rid of that. Oh actually I can do something here. I don't have to get rid of this yet actually since that's already in place and I know these objects are situated there. There's one thing we could do. What is that command? You know what that command is. S and then listen is Z and then press 0 on the numpad. There you go. Flattens all the vertices. That's a powerful little trick. Okay so I'm going to go into edit mode on here and there's what I had had selected before so I'll just modify that a little bit. So the one thing when you're going to build these kind of meshes is to make sure that you're in face select mode. Definitely not vertex select. I've had troubles before in the past building the mesh and having it where it won't actually recognize the mesh. So face select is crucial and then maybe I'll come in here and I'll press the C key and I'll just add a few more pieces to it like this. All right. And that's good enough. So we've just modified it in this sort. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to extrude it on Z. Easy, easy. I'm going to extrude it up like this. Okay, so then I can leave edit mode. So now I have the basic shape built. But now I have to turn it into a mesh. And there's a couple things. One is you come into the scene button here, this third button over. And you just click press build navigation mesh. Actually, you'll see it like this. So I'm going to build that as a navigation mesh. And it builds these like this and you can see these are connected so I can know that these will go around to that point as long as this is connected that surface and a lot of cases you'll see it shown in color I don't like the colors as much I'll stick with it here but at least I know it's built like this and the next thing is I need to know the name of this which I've already pre-named as well it's named as nav mesh now and then on oh actually I need to know this object here is cube and this is my nav mesh so with this I'm going to go into the game logic here and I already have these set up but I'll just I'll just show you what it is here so it's nothing more than a, an always sensor that's running here don't even have to have the pulse mode on and sensor and then over here I'll just do it again steering actuator like this so when it comes up like this the one thing different in the previous video I had, we were using seek just to track down an object but there were no obstacles in the way in this case we have to change it to path following instead and our target is going to be, oh no, I always forget that. Our target is what? <laughs> is the cube. All right. All right, so press the target is the cube. And the navigation mesh is the nav mesh, like this here. And let's see if I have everything set. We'll have to be connected. And then another thing I have to make sure is that this object here, since I'm using this to track around, is it has to be a physics-based object. And I have mine set at dynamic. The difference between dynamic and rigid body is rigid body means it can rotate. Dynamic means it's just going to glide without rotating or moving without rotating. So that has to be set as well. And then you'll notice this in here now has this property set under the physics tab navigation mesh like this. All right. Sometimes I have to come back here and reset the index values. Not always. And I'm not sure why, but that's always the fix that makes it work for me. So I'll just press P and let's see if it runs. And there it goes, hits that corner. Let's see if it goes around all the way. Well, we see it's working. Let's get it from a different perspective so we're a little bit closer in. All right. There it is, hits that corner. 
and there's all kinds of parameters you can set, but this kind of gives you the basics of what to work with. And yep, looks looks like it's going to make it. So as long as you have those solid colors of the colors, all those multicolors connected to each other, it seems to work every time. Okay, and then that's it. And so, like I said, every once in a while I have to reset the index values when I've dumped something goofy. I'm not sure what I do something, but and but it's a powerful feature. And I'm sure, certainly not going to write code to try and do it when there's all kinds of super smart people writing Blender code for us, right? Take advantage of it. All these guys who are writing this code, they're smart, smart people, right? So it's really to our advantage just to be able to use these tools, right? Okay, well, that's it for now, and I'll see you in the next lesson.